My name is Frank Melchior and I'm with Advanced Systems Concepts and I'm pleased to introduce today's presentation of the Everything Strategy, Five Essentials of Effective Data Warehouse Automation. Data without insight has little value. And as data warehouse professionals, your jobs are based on the idea of turning zeros and ones into actionable insight that helps your businesses run more efficiently, make better informed decisions, earn new customers, turn your existing customers into advocates, and identify new opportunities. But in a time where competition is fierce, pressures from the business side are increasing, and IT staff is harder and harder to find and retain, how do you meet these demands, adapt to change faster, and continue to innovate? By virtue of your being here today, you understand that automation has the potential to help you more quickly and easily achieve these outcomes. And I'd venture to guess that most, if not all of you, have at least some automated processes in place. But is automation in your organization a catalyst that drives innovation? One of the biggest obstacles to the adoption and effectiveness of automation is the lack of a holistic plan. In today's presentation, we hope, uh, you'll be challenged uh, to begin looking at automation in a new and different way. You'll be introduced to the Everything Strategy, an automation-centric, proactive, and unifying approach designed to drive digital transformation and evolve faster than the complexity it's designed to simplify. Presenting the Everything Strategy is today's speaker, Ralph Paparo. Ralph has built a career driving value through the design and delivery of business and technical systems. As the Senior Director of Data Warehouse for Mediacom Communications, the fifth largest cable and internet company in the United States, Ralph is responsible for the strategic vision and operational team managing Informatica Power Center, Data Warehouse Automation, and Business Intelligence. Ralph is an automation advocate. He's going to share his story today and also outline for you actionable steps you can take to improve coordination, performance, and end-to-end -end visibility of your processes and their outcomes. So please join me in welcoming to the stage today's speaker, Ralph Paparo. Thank you, Frank. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today at the session regarding automation and the use cases data warehouse. This happens to be one of my favorite topics. And the reason for that is it touches so many parts of technology. We heard yesterday at the market perspectives some of the real challenges that we're having today with this explosion in data and data management. Automation touches process management and every single process that it has to do with data management. It talks about technology and it talks about application management. All the things that we are really trying to integrate when we look at a robust data warehouse. So let's get started. Um, before before I, we go over the agenda, um, remember uh, I, I work for Mediacom Communications Corp and the views in this presentation are essentially mine and do not necessarily represent Mediacom and or its affiliates, of which I'm gainfully employed and still will be at the end of this presentation. <laughs> okay, what are we gonna look at? We're gonna look at the use case. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Mediacom, a little bit about the data warehouse, and some of the business challenges that we faced when I arrived at Mediacom in 2013. From there, we're gonna look at the everything strategy, which is part vision and, as Frank said, part execution strategy on how you could potentially bring together this spaghetti code into one framework and really drive automation in your environment. We don't have a lot of time today, so we're not gonna to focus too much on performance, but if we think about trying to accomplish everything, we have to have outstanding performance. We have to have outstanding performance from our infrastructure. We have to have outstanding performance from our applications. We have to have outstanding performance from our staff and the people that we work with. And really the underlying tenant to the everything strategy is performance and I'm going to try to highlight that wherever I can in the presentation. From there, I'm gonna show you the results. Um, from the data warehouse for 20, 
2018, and then we are going to show you a couple of strategies and features, four or five of them, as quickly as I can, in order to take those everything strategies and actually apply them as part of your automation framework. From there, we're going to wrap up with some advanced automation strategies. So again, the application here is way outside of the data warehouse. We want you to think about automation and its application outside of a basic data integration flow. And the last thing, we're going to bring it all together and wrap it up with some closing comments. Let's get started. Mediacom, it's the fifth largest cable operator in the United States. We operate in 22 states in the United States, and we have about 6,400 employees. We don't provide cable service here in Vegas. We are actually headquartered in New York, but we don't provide any cable service in New York either. Our main market is Des Moines, Iowa, and what we say at Mediacom is that we provide cable services to small and mid-sized communities in the Midwest and the southern tier of the United States. These are the four primary services that are provided by cable, high-speed data, video, and telephone services. Inside of these primary services, we provide hundreds of other combinations and services like TiVo, calling plans, and home controller, which happens to be our home management product. So that's a little bit about Mediacom and the, ca and the cable company. From a data warehousing perspective, and we all know every data warehouse is different, but we provide the standard data integration services that you would expect from a data warehouse. We also provide reporting services, and we're going to talk about some of those applications that we use in a minute. The third thing we do, and this makes us different, we are actually running alongside data integration and reporting three major applications. We run commission programs, we run invoicing programs, and we run an entire productivity suite for our field technicians inside of the data warehouse. This adds to its complexity and this need for increased automation. If that didn't make us different enough, we also provide automation and scheduling services for the business units that we support. This is how strongly we feel about this platform, and we are always trying to drive business process improvement for our stakeholders, for our business partners, via automation and integration, and hopefully you're going to get an idea about that. I want to talk very briefly about the platform that we use. Maybe it looks very simple, but it's not. We run 33 different servers across two different data centers. But when we talk about application integration and technology integration, this is what it means to Mediacom. We have two, new we have two environments. We're running a, our new 2.0 environment on an Exadata 12C. Data, uh, database along with OBI as its reporting backend. The legacy framework is running on an Oracle 10G database along with Cognos as its reporting framework. In both of those environments, we're running Informatica version 10, and we're also using Active Batch IT automation to run those two environments. So it runs our legacy production, it runs our 2.0 production, it also runs our new test and dev environment. So we have two instances of Active Batch that essentially are running four different environments that run essentially every single day. What's important about the cable use case? Well, we're always on. 24-7, 365 days a year, our subscribers always expect that our services are going to be on, and as a result, the data warehouse has to also has to fit into this profile. One of the things that I say about my data warehouse is we run it like a high availability system even though we don't have any redundancy and any failover. And when you see some of our metrics, you'll get a better idea of that. Um, before I move off of here, I just want to call your attention to the um, logo and the tagline is power to simplify. So when I joined Mediacom in 2013, and I was essentially running data integration, reporting, and application management, I did not realize how complicated it was. And when I saw this tagline, I said, we absolutely have to adopt this as one of the tenants that we need to drive in the data warehouse. And you are going to see that that simplified tenant 
essentially is the first tenant of the everything strategy. Let's go back to 2013. We can't spend a lot of time talking about this environment, but this is what we were running. We were running a highly distributed code-based environment PL SQL. Most of the integrations and all of the applications were coded in PL SQL. This should mean one thing to you, not very agile, right? So this had to change. The other thing that we had was we had daily failures, and those failures were really consuming the team all day, every single day. I had a consultant that worked for me, and in, on his desk, he had the days between failures. That was always zero. It never moved from zero. I'm not saying we never had a failure, but if we did, it was probably more of a miracle than anything else. Um, the batch window extended 18 to 20 hours. Again, we're talking about the rhythm, so I don't need to explain to you if we're pushing 18, 19, 20 hours, the chances are that we were going to run into the next day's run was absolutely very high risk, and this was something we had to fix as well. If you were to ask me what the number one problem was, really what the number one problem with this whole platform, and I could almost describe it as spaghetti if I wanted to, it was that we could not evaluate our own performance. We didn't know if we had process problems. We didn't know if we had technology problems. We didn't know if we had infrastructure problems. We didn't know if we had database problems. We had no idea. So after two months at uh, Mediacom, I recommended that we would put in an automation framework to help solve all of these problems plus many other issues. So the first thing that I did was I went to the people at Mediacom and I asked, hey, do we have any type of automation tool? Do you want to guess what the reaction was that I got? What is that? <laughs> Never heard of it. Okay. So that was obstacle number one. I didn't get the warmest reception from my boss either, but thankfully he funded our initial project. But what we realized we needed was we really needed a strategy and um, a communication approach to really tell everyone what we were going to do. And this is how the everything strategy was born. It has five tenets. That first one is simplify everything. I told my team we had to simplify integration, reporting, and application management in the data warehouse. And I also told them the way you were going to do it was you were going to put it into a singular platform. That's the automation framework that we were building. Think about it. You tell your team, OK, I need you to simplify, make things better. How do you know? You don't know until you start to monitor your own performance, until you really understand the performance, whether it's at the database level or whether it's the process level. So we instituted monitoring across all the critical systems that we were doing. Not only did we do that, once we started to build our automation platform, we turned on this approach called active monitoring, where we, in real time, were, managed, were, were looking at the processes that were running every single day. So we were not waiting for them to fail. We were proactively trying to address them. And this should not escape you. Your ability to manage processes in real time is really the key to building a very effective strategy. From there, we moved on to control and automate. If you work in the data warehouse like I do, some days you feel like you don't control anything. Your data sources don't get delivered on time. The data inside your data sources are corrupted. Um, your infrastructure may have a problem, you may have connectivity, right? You are at risk for all or any of those things on any given day. We decided we had to take control of the data warehouse and automate every single process that we could. The main thing that we did here was we came off of a time dependency because that old spaghetti framework was built based on time and we moved it to a trigger constraint dependency based process. The last two tenets here, automate and report, came from the business. They don't care that I'm spending all day trying to fix yesterday's runs. It doesn't matter to them. We all know the appetite for 
more data, better integration, and more reporting is absolutely something that the business continues to want from all of us. So we, so we adopted Informatica as the main tenant of the um, integrate strategy, right? This ability to connect everything to everything and essentially connect that highly, um, that highly distributed um, application and data set that we had. We are going to talk about integration and reporting in a much different framework, right? We are going to start to expand this to technology integration, to application integration as we go through the presentation. If you were here for last year's presentations of the keynote, um, Cognizant gave one about the disruptors. And the reason I am bringing that up is, if you think about this everything strategy, nobody in IT, nobody in their right mind would ever really commit to doing everything. And maybe that tells you a little bit about myself that I'm not really an IT person, but I committed to try to do everything. But when I listened to the Cognizant keynote from last year, they talked about this concept of everything. And they talked about it in relationship to the disruptors. And this is what they said. They said that the disruptors instrument everything. No question about it, we should all be doing that. They said they learn and discover everything. And I absolutely agree. And when I was putting this solution in with my team, this is what I told them. I told them that we will learn and discover everything about our system. It forces you to do that. When you move a process to one platform and you forgot a piece, it's going to fail. It is going to force you to discover and understand everything about your platform. The other thing Cognizant sent was that uh, disruptors enhance everything. Uh, hopefully I'm not talking too fast, but um, we had to cut it out of the presentation. But the fourth tenet on my implementation plan was this concept of continuous improvement. Now I'm probably dating myself because this was a concept that we had at the turn of the century in the early 2000s when we were putting in ERPs and we talked about this process of continuous improvement. This is something that I constantly am trying to motivate my team to do and Cognizant said that the disruptors do. The last thing that Cognizant said that the disruptors do is that they automate everything. And here we are, it's the central tenet of the everything strategy and I'm going to challenge you to think about challenging every, about automating every single process that you're involved with because I absolutely believe that there's a platform to do that in. Okay, let's look at the current data warehouse at Mediacom. So we went from that we're failing processes and we're running 18 to 20 hours a day. This is what we're doing today. We're running 70 processes a day. I wanted to equate that from a jobs perspective. It's about 300 jobs. We're running 630,000 job steps in this environment. Don't worry about that. I'm actually going to show you and try to teach you something about what a job step is in a minute. But the important thing is you see the list. We're running data integration, reporting, DMS, near real time. All of these processes are running in that 630,000 job steps. So we are running far more scale, far more data than we ever did five years ago. 97% of the processes are completing before 8 a.m. By the time I go to my 9 o'clock meeting, I know the data warehouse is completely loaded and ready for business. No more 5, 6, 7 o'clock at night. We run one process, one job, every 15 minutes of every single day inside of this framework via automation. This job is running 96 times a day. It's essentially moving telephone records. And the current success rate of the automation platform is 99.9. So we're far different than it was in um, 2013. Frank asked me, hey, can you share the metrics from 2013? Well, of course we couldn't because we had no platform to really monitor and report that. But you're going to see how it easy it is to do that in a well-integrated, well-designed platform. This is a report that you get out of ActiveBatch that I think is a very powerful report. So here, you are essentially seeing every single process that ran in the Mediacom data warehouse 
in 2017. And you actually see the number there. It's 636,699. How many people can really tell me how many processes they ran um, in their department? You can see it's, this is a great report. It's got my failed, completed, and canceled counts and metrics. So by server, there's eight different servers up there, by server I know exactly how those processes ex executed, what percentage they completed at. What to me is really outstanding is you know something about the underlying infrastructure of those servers. If you look to further to the right, you're going to find OS metrics. These are OS metrics about those processes that ran on those servers. So you get to see your processes and you get to see your operating, um, your OS statistics all in one place. Let's extend this example one step further. You can tell that those two servers are running pretty heavy loads. And maybe we think there's a problem. Inside of ActiveBatch, you can actually drill down a level here. And this is called the machine load view. Now I think I already said I'm not the most technical guy. But my wife has taught me red, orange, bad. Green is probably OK, right? So we can tell here that server one is probably running hot and um, very close to capacity, while the green, which is a heat map, is telling us that this other server is fine. You can absolutely, the purpose for this is to take processes off of server one and move them down to server two. And this is how easy it is to essentially equate your processes that you're running, regardless of the technology set, and some of the OS statistics here. I'm gonna talk about this later when we talk about um, some advanced automation features. We don't necessarily do this, but this is a great, this is a great feature. That report that I just showed you is generated from this view. This is called the instance view in Active Batch. And if you think about the lowest piece of data that you can get about a process, we are looking at it here. Um, we simplify this approach and you can see that we're running, um, I'm showing you a near real-time process. Again, it's an example of just another workload that we're running inside the MediaCom data warehouse. You can tell its interval is by hour. If you look across, you can tell the queue, which is essentially the server. We have the name and we have the state. We know whether it completed, whether we aborted it or it failed. Next to that, you have the execution date and time. And next to that, you have the duration. So you know exactly how long it took for this process to run inside of your framework. Next to that, it shows in parentheses whether it is running faster or slower than the 90 previous instances of that particular job. So you get instantaneous performance metrics about any particular process that you're running inside of the framework. If you look down at the bottom, we've expanded um, two of the jobs there. And I just, this is an example of a job step. So if you look at the very bottom line, it says EWP um, SP add. So here we are running an Oracle 10G um, store procedure that is actually pulling and loading data into our data warehouse. From there, we are creating two cubes inside of our Cognos framework. And you can see very clearly that we are actually integrating with a bat job. How many people still run bat jobs in their framework? Ah, we got one, two, right? Um, part of what I want to demonstrate to you here, it doesn't matter what that underlying technology is, configured correctly, you are going to be able to get this type of detail from this type of job step in any process that you build. I want to talk real quickly about the middle instance there, or the third one down. You see that it's maroon in color and it clearly says it's failed. What happened with this instance, if you look at the purple line, we actually aborted this because you can see there that it's saying it ran 27 minutes beyond its expected completion time. Here we have automated the remediation of the failure. So we automatically reset this job and as you can see the 8 o'clock and the 9 o'clock instance ran successfully. If we let this job fail or we let it run long, it absolutely would have interfered with all the successive 
planned runs here for the NRT. Again, delivering a tremendous amount of value, not only to me, but also to my team. Are we wondering how we build something like this? Be careful what you ask for. Um, I want to give you a real simple example of a data integration job. This essentially has three major steps. In that zero one step, we're going to get our data. In our zero two step, we're going to integrate our data. And then step three, we're going to do something with our data. I want you to focus on that red um, highlighted box. This is where we're going to demonstrate the integration of all the different technologies. We run a highly parameterized environment, so we're kicking off our variable in step one. Fair enough. In step two, we are now making an API call. I don't think I've ever heard so much discussion about APIs in my life before I came to Informatica world. I agree, this is the integration method of choice now. This is a job step available to you in Informatica. My team didn't have to build anything. They didn't have to design anything. Yes, they had to configure this. But that's all they had to do. And you can see that we are now really integrating an additional piece of technology into this process. The next step is we're hitting our file system. right? We're going to skip by that. And now we're running a PowerShell script. This PowerShell script is running from inside of the job. Right, from inside of this process. It doesn't live on any server. If this fails, the developer knows exactly where to go. The other advantage is we can run this process from any server because it's not script dependent based on the server. And this is the advantage here. So we're four steps in. We've already integrated three different technologies. I'm going to skip the next two steps. And of course, we have to use Informatica to integrate our data. Right? So what's that step? Start workflow. This, is, again, is a job step that is integrated with Informatica via Active batch. Um, and it's essentially starting the workflow just like we would from the application. The second step is getting the session statistics. You probably do this as well. Again, every time you build a step, not only do you make it very visible, but you also track all those performance statistics along with it. I'm going to skip ahead here and just to the SFTP. So here we are. We're now sending our data out on SFTP. And we are essentially sending the notice out as well, all in one process. So in this one in data integration job, we used ActiveBatch, we called an API, we used PowerShell, and we used Informatica. Four different technologies, all in one singular process. So if I lost you on that, and that was a little bit too much detail, I have a visual representation of this that I want to show you. Right, so here's our Informatica Power Center application. We drop it in, you install it, it's fully featured. Below that, right, we're now adding this integration layer of Active Batch. We've already talked that it is going to talk to Informatica via these job steps. Below that, you have all the features that you've built that come with ActiveBatch that you can now integrate back up and through your process. So whether it's status checks, decryption, you can do all those steps, pass your data back into Power Center, and then bring it back out in one seamless process. You can monitor, you can control, and absolutely, you are automating every single step in this process. I want to extend this example one more to what we do in the data warehouse all the time. I'm dropping in business intelligence, right? So now what am I doing? I still have all those steps available to me. Right? I can integrate up into my Informatica Power Center. I can send directly over to BI. Again, I ha essentially have Active Batch doing all of this coordination for me inside of the application. And now you can extend this as many applications, as many processes as you can. Okay? Good. Um, let's talk a little bit about the advanced automation here. Again, I just want you thinking about it. So I already showed you the remediation of a failed process. To me, this is the real power of any automation, where something goes wrong and you can automatically fix it. But we've also incorporated ActiveBatch in our DR and our outage protocol. 
What it does here is that it, um, it helps with the recovery of the outage and limits the damage of the outage. And this saves us a tremendous amount of time when we are trying to bring back our systems after a major outage. I don't know if the encryption and decryption is still a problem these days, but we encrypt everything inside our data warehouse. This is essentially just another job step for us. Um, we've extended this for reporting. You can use your Informatica power center to essentially build your ETL and send out any type of report outside of the framework without building additional database objects. This is how we've approved the agility to the data warehouse. And the last thing is workload management. I told you before in the example, we don't do that. In Active Batch, you can absolutely build a round robin. You can manage your workflow. So if you don't have this at your application level, you can absolutely build this type of functionality inside the application and apply it to all the applications that, that you have. OK, let's bring it back to the um, everything strategy. Can we simplify everything? Absolutely. If I can say one thing about Active Batch and that process is when we adopted it, we installed it, we configured it, and we started running it ourselves. If my data architect was here, she would tell you that's the definition of simple. Anything that you can run yourself is absolutely simple. And from my perspective, this framework absolutely is very simple. Can you monitor everything? Absolutely. We have built a host of additional reports to make sure that we are constantly monitoring our system throughout today, even if we're not actively monitoring the environment. Can you control and automate everything? Well, I've probably already given you five or six different things that you can control and automate inside an environment. Um, again, you're going to build dependency checks, you're going to build triggers, file watches. These are all available to you, and they all really react the same way with all the various applications, and it provides a tremendous amount of value. Can you integrate everything? Well, we've talked a lot about the integration. We can integrate technologies, we can integrate processes, and we can absolutely integrate applications. And can we report everything? Remember, this tenant is not about the business, it's for us. Can we report our own performance? Do we know how our own operating system is doing? Absolutely, you get some very key operational statistics out of this framework when you adopt this type of approach. OK, last but not least, some closing comments here. Um, we really saw the payback here in six months. I happen to be a, a finance guy at heart, and I had built some complicated ROI model, which we completely junked after six months. You know when you have a hit, and we knew that we were going to be extremely successful here, and hopefully we've showed some of that. Um, Mediacom is now adopting ActiveBatch as its enterprise integration tool, so that's good news. I told you a little bit about um, the reaction I got when I introduced this concept and this application at Mediacom. It absolutely needs an advocation um, advocate. A lot of people don't understand this um, type of application. They see it as additional overhead. Yes, you do have to do additional work. There's additional licensing. But we have found the payback on this um, so far reaching that it's absolutely worth all of that effort. And the last thing that I would say is plan automation into every single process. The BAs work for me. I tell them, make sure that when you meet with the business, you talk about automation, because this is how we're really going to drive business value in the organization. A, a successful job by itself doesn't mean anything unless you see the data movement happening successfully. How are you able to monitor that? You know, a job can be successful, but data movement may not happen. Yeah. That's a great question. Part of our critical framework sends out all the KPIs every morning before 8 o'clock. So that's how I know the data warehouse is really loaded, because I know that report that is going to senior executives is, is ready to go. And part of the SLA there is getting it to management before 8 o'clock. So yeah, I agree. It's, the proof is in the pudding, absolutely. <laughs>